you enjoy listening to that little bit of music? Did you listen to that music mindfully? What role does music have in mindfulness and in particular when teaching a mindfulness class or, or coaching someone in mindfulness? This is the Teach Mindfulness Podcast. My name is Shamash Aladina and today we're exploring how to use music in mindfulness sessions and classes and things like that. Well, first of all, um, traditionally, I guess, you know, when people were learning meditation, I don't think so much music was involved. Certainly in, if you go back to kind of spiritual traditions or even in, in religions and things like today, music is used a lot, singing is used a lot. So I guess it's arguable whether or not uh, music is integrated with, with mindfulness. But certainly I'm thinking of... Uh, when people first practice meditation, I imagine there wasn't that much sound in the background. It was all about tuning into your to your inside thoughts, feelings, sensations, and tuning into the silence. And quite often, you know, they meditated in, in far off places. Um, music is such a powerful thing, isn't it? I mean, everything from young children, tiny babies, all the way up to, to the elderly love music. Most people seem to like some form of music. Some people love all types of music. And it's very kind of evocative. It links up with our emotions very strongly. But interestingly, mostly in mindfulness classes, music isn't used that much. However, if you go online, if you look you know, on apps and things, if you look at the maybe YouTube and places like that, you find that when people are listening to guided meditations, there's often some sort of music in the background different types of music and so there is this kind of natural thirst that people have uh, for music and sound in the background so uh, if you're recording guided meditations you could put some music in the background you could put some nature sounds and maybe we could talk in the future about nature sounds Uh, but one of the problems is that different people like different music and one person may prefer just total silence in the background that one may prefer a certain type of music and not another. So it becomes a little bit tricky if you create, if you've got one fixed group that you're teaching or a certain person you're teaching, unless you can get that feedback from them. Uh, if you just stick one certain type of music in, others may not like it. Having said that, there might be certain music that's, you know, many people like or has this universal quality to it and, and people may enjoy it. So there's no hard and fast rules here. And although mostly in mindful classes, it's silence. What I'm saying is that, you know, we could start to explore the idea of bringing music in. Uh, There's two ways to do it. So one of them is in the background, uh, in your guided meditation. But another way is to, and and this is something that does work uh, for everyone, is that, you you know, you may explain something about mindfulness and then have a little section in in your class where you play a piece of music. It may be for five minutes or 10 minutes. And, you know, explain a little bit about mindful listening and about being non-judgmental and and to really be in the moment and and to stay with it and notice the thoughts and feelings and sensations and the reactions we have to the music. And then you play the piece of music and then you can discuss it afterwards. And it helps helps the class not just learn about uh, mindful listening, but also how we so easily judge some sounds that we like and we don't like and that's fine but it's just what you're learning that's what our mind does it it judges things it categorizes things and we do that not just for sounds and music of course we do it everywhere so there's lots of potentials for things that you could learn with music so don't feel that you could you know you have to just have silence all the time there's something to be learned from all our different senses including the sense of sound you can be creative with it and just like we talked about with poetry before, you know, if your group is up for it or you have someone who's a musician, maybe they could even play a bit of a music in the, in the session that you have with them one-to-one, for example. They could record something and you can listen to it together. Um, you can experiment with different forms of music. And you can vary it sometimes, you know. Once in a while you may have some music in the background and other times not. And uh, I'm a big fan of, you know, not always doing the same thing again and again, but shaking things up, trying something different and seeing how how the group or the individual responds to it. Because that way, when you're doing something different, 
you're learning something new from it they're learning something new from it too so don't be scared to try something new be curious and uh, invite your students to have that same attitude as well to try try new things to be curious to notice and to see what they discover so i'll leave that with you uh reflecting on on how to use music in mindful classes and if you have any thoughts on that or questions then feel free to send them uh, my name's shamash and uh, do check out our website teachmindfulnessonline.com forward slash free and we've got a free i think ebook that you can get there um We've got some other cool stuff coming up. Actually, we're releasing a new community uh, for mindful teachers. So if you're interested in that, also get in touch. All right. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow. As a fun little experiment now, you get the opportunity to listen to the full track. It's called Glass Beads by Blue Dot Sessions. It's the music that you've been hearing in the background. Enjoy mindful listening and see how it goes.